Okay, in this video we're going to be covering 5.2a, Geometric Constraints. Um, you should have already read the introduction and highlighted this information to gain a little bit of background knowledge of where we're going to go and kind of start to get an understanding of constraints. Now just so you know, we're not going to follow what they're doing on the Project Lead the Way site. I just wanted you to read the introduction to get a little bit of background information. We're going to go off on our own right now. So, in Inventor, you're going to go ahead and follow along with me. I made a new sketch on the front plane. And let's start talking about constraints. So to do this, we're just going to go ahead and start drawing a, just a shape. I'm not really worried about dimensions right now, so just kind of follow along with me and just um, draw this shape as well. Yours does not have to be exactly the same as mine. Just draw a similar shape. So I left-clicked on the origin. And then I'm moving my mouse directly to the right along the x-axis. Left click somewhere, draw a straight line. And then just draw another angle line like so. And then let's add another one, but now let's snap to the y-axis. Left click there. And then close it off. And then hit escape on the keyboard. So right now I have a sketch. I have two purple lines, so that's telling me that some things are constrained. Remember, purple means that those are constrained. And then another good indicator somewhere to look is down on the bottom right hand corner. It tells you that you're missing four dimensions in order to fully constrain this sketch. Now sometimes it's, you know, you don't really know what four dimensions you're missing. So some good tips are to turn on your constraints so you can see what's already there. And also turn on something called degrees of freedom. So let me show you how to turn on the constraints first so you can see what's already out there. So to do that, you're simply just going to right click and go to show all constraints. Notice the keyboard shortcut is F8. Now when you do that, your constraints are going to turn on. This constraint is a horizontal constraint. Now the reason that stayed horizontal, even though I don't have any dimensions, it's because I drew a perfectly straight line along the x-axis so it automatically put that constraint there for me because of what I drew. The other thing you'll notice is that this line here has a perpendicular constraint and when you hover over it, it even highlights the two lines that that constraint is being applied to. And this one is because I started at 0, 0, so that's why that constraint is there. So it's locking those points down to the 0, 0. So that's one way you can see your constraints. And then the other thing that you're going to want to look at is degrees of freedom. And if we go look at Autodesk's website, this is what they define degrees of freedom, uh, the glyphs that are going to come up. So they provide an alternative means of identifying constrained status of sketch geometry. So it's going to help us identify maybe where we need to add some more constraints. So how do you turn those on? You right click and go show all degrees of freedom. As soon as you do that, you're going to see these red arrows pop up. And those red arrows are indicating points that are still free to move or rotate. And they actually display which way they can move. So this point can move up, down, left, right. You know, this one can only move in this direction, but it can also rotate. This point can only move left to right. So those degrees of freedom can really help us to get this fully constrained and see where we need to add more constraints or dimensions. And best practice when talking about dimensioning or adding constraints, it's best to add all the constraints first and then your dimensions. So you want to add in all your geometric constraints first to try and lock down the sketch as much as possible and then add in your dimensions afterwards. So let's just do a quick little practice of this and constrain this sketch. So follow along with me and do this click for click. So the first thing that, let's say I want this line to always be equal to this line. So they're always going to be the same length. So what I could do is up here in my constraints uh, panel, you have, what is this, 12 different constraints that you have in your arsenal. So here's an equal constraint. So I'm going to click on that. And then I'm going to click this line and click this line. So no matter what, these two will always be equal. And then let's say that I wanted to make sure that this is perpendicular because right now it's kind of going on this weird angle. So I could use the perpendicular constraint and I can make this perpendicular to this. 
So now that has added those in. And then finally, let's say I wanted to dimension. So now I'm done with my constraints. I have everything the way I want it, but I need some dimensions. So I could do a height dimension, let's say 1.5. And then I could do a width dimension there of two. And you'll notice that as I started to do that, those degrees of freedom were disappearing. So let's talk about the first constraint, which is called coincident. So a coincident constraint is going to lock down two points. Um, so that way you can't like pull them apart. So in this instance, you're seeing the center of the circle uh, being and there's a coincident constraint applied to it to lock it down to that arc. So that center of the circle is going to be locked down to that arc. So let's go ahead and do um, a new sketch or I'm sorry, let's add a new line. But let's, I'm going to start somewhere up here, doesn't matter, just make sure you're snapping to this top edge, left click, and then let's just go ahead out here, left click, and let's just kind of just make this, I don't know, kind of weird shape here, and then left click somewhere along this, um, this right edge of the rectangle. So we're just kind of making a weird shape there, make something similar, it doesn't have to look exactly like mine. I'm going to hit escape to get the line tool. I'm going to move this dimension over a little bit to kind of get out of my way. I still have my constraints turned on. So you notice there are no constraints at all on this new shape that I added. So what we're going to do is use the coincident constraint to constrain the end point of this line to the midpoint of this line. So that way these, those two will be locked in on one another. So I'm going to go coincident. I'm going to click on the end point of this line. And then I'm going to click on the midpoint of this line. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with this one. So I'm going to go coincident, click on the end point, make sure that just the end point's red, and then click on the midpoint of the purple line. So now that is constrained to that midpoint. So let's just kind of test out what you just did. If you hover over like this end point right here, this line, and you move it, you'll notice that that end point on the left is staying locked to the midpoint but the degrees of freedom allow me to still move this point wherever I want. Same thing up here on this one. If you click on, let me zoom in there. There we go. You can click and move it wherever you want but it's still staying locked into there using the collinear constraint. And then now that you understand that, I'm just going to go ahead and delete this and delete that. The next one that we have to check out is the collinear constraint. So the collinear constraint is going to pretty much make two lines line up with one another or coexist on the same linear path is another way to say it. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that does. So go ahead and draw a line just on a weird angle right here. You could draw it however long you want. And then now let's use the collinear constraint. So I'm going to click on that. And then I'm going to click on the line and then click on this top edge. So you'll notice that now this is collinear with this. They are perfectly aligned on the same plane. Notice the collinear constraint symbol popped up and they are now good to go. Let's take one more example or look at another example of how you could use this. And to do that, I'm going to go ahead and move this dimension out again. And we're going to make some edits to this sketch. So what I'm going to do is just draw a line here. Doesn't matter the dimensions, just make sure you're maintaining perpendicular and horizontal. And I'm just going to draw kind of a notch like that. And then I'm going to trim out the middle here. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is what if, let me hit escape here. I'm going to click and drag this line. Whoops. And actually, let's go ahead and delete this 1.5. Let's, uh, what do we want to do? Whoops. Next, we're going to add a perpendicular constraint. Let's go between this line and this line. And then this line and this line. 
Oh, looks like I already had it. If you don't have it, click those two and add a perpendicular. And this is kind of a bad example. I'm going to undo. I'm going to do Control Z to bring me back to the square. All right, so undo all that. You should just have this. Let's go back. So I did a Control Z. I kept pressing Control Z, or you could use the back arrow. Just get back to this. All right, let's draw something new over here. So I'm going to go Line Tool. Doesn't matter. Don't worry about the lengths. Just draw. Whoops. I want to make sure that that is perpendicular. Undo that. Just make sure you're drawing straight lines. So I'm going to go straight across, come straight down, straight over. And again, you're just drawing something similar to mine. Don't worry about numbers. So go ahead and just draw this shape right here. And a good use here of the collinear constraint would be maybe you want this line to be collinear with this one. So they're always going to be aligned with one another. So I can go to collinear. And then I can click on this and I can click on this and now those two will always stay aligned with one another. So there's an example of a collinear. And the next one in the constraints is concentric and that is referring to cylindrical shapes or arcs. So let's go ahead and just draw one circle and then draw another circle. And then if you go coincident or sorry concentric and you click on this circle and then this circle it'll they will now both share the same center point so if you move one the other one stays there and they will not move from each other they share the same center no matter how big or small you make them if you move the middle they both move together so if you grab that center that center point there and move them they will move with one another so that is the concentric constraint. All right, for the next one, it is parallel. And we've already done this, I think, once, but we're going to redo it one more time. So just draw a shape kind of the same as mine. Doesn't have to be exactly the same numbers, but draw something similar. So if you notice, we already got a horizontal, a perpendicular, and these two lines are parallel, the top and the bottom. But let's say that I want these parallel. When you're thinking of parallel constraint, think of train tracks. They're never going to run into each other. So I'm going to click on parallel, and then I'm going to click this line and this line. So now I have my parallel constraints. And the next one is your perpendicular. So if you have a line here and then another line like this, you can apply a perpendicular constraint between the two, which will then create your 90 degree angle. So I can go perpendicular, click on this line, click on this line, and it has now created that perpendicular constraint to create that 90 degree angle. And the next two I'm going to go over together, uh, we have a horizontal constraint, which will put that thing right at zero or 180 versus the uh, vertical constraint, which would be at a 90 or 270 degrees. So if you just draw, let's just draw two lines. Right, so I got one there. Let's draw another one. Doesn't matter, just draw whatever you want. And then let's add a horizontal constraint to this one. Notice it is now perfectly horizontal and straight. And then let's add a vertical constraint to this one. So now I have a horizontal and a vertical constraint. All right, so I'm gonna hit escape to get out of that vertical constraint. The next one that we're going to do is a tangent. So to do, explain that one, I'm just going to draw a line here above this circle somewhere. Hit escape. And then I'm going to go tangent. And I'm going to click on the circle and then click on the line. So it creates a point of tangency right there between those two uh, 2D objects. And the last one that we're going to talk about is the equal constraint, which we've already used. But uh, I just want to show you how you could use it maybe with a horizontal line and a vertical line. So if I go equal and I make this one equal to this one, and then I add in a dimension for this line. Now if I change the dimension of this line to 3 inches, notice that the other line over here is also adjusted to 3 inches. And that is your equal constraint. So that is your tutorial on constraints. I know we skipped a few, 
but the ones that I went over are the ones that you're really going to be using all the time. And remember, you want to try and add your constraints, as many constraints as you can before dimensioning. And if these constraints are kind of, you know, starting to become a little bit claustrophobic and there's just so much going on that you don't want to see them, remember you can right click and hide all constraints if they're getting in your way. And also a quick review, remember you can also right click and show degrees of freedom to see where you need to add constraints or dimensions.